Raw vlog recorded in front of a live beverage Raw and unedited Some people don't get it Because I just talk it Sticks in their craw But you get it You get the raw vlog Raw vlog Good morning and welcome to Raw Vlog 47 Raw vlogs are a series on the Airhorn channel, um, which is a companion channel to my main MTB Allen channel. We have the raw vlogs on here. We also have the Airhorn podcasts, which are interviews, also raw and unedited. So if you're unfamiliar with the channel, this is what it's about. Check to see if you're subscribed. If that little subscribe button is red, hit it and I will show up in your feed and you'll be supporting the Airhorn channel and you'll be getting these raw vlogs. Um, today's raw vlog, the topic is getting out of a rut, getting into a rut. What's up with that? What's up with your brain and how do you deal with your brain? I don't really know what I'm saying right now. Let's get into channel news, channel news in channel news this week. Uh, I want to apologize because I, I want to say sorry because I like to get to your comments as quickly as I can. I try to get to them within an hour, and I know I've been getting to them a little bit late, sometimes the next day. Um, Not casting blame, but um, my uh, looks like for whatever reason, they're not showing up in YouTube studio, which is what I use to like kind of keep track of things. They're not necessarily showing up right away. I'll just see a bunch of comments come in all at once, and they're all like, from 12 hours ago. So I I am sorry about that. I do try to get to them as quickly as I can. Um, So do please keep putting the comments in. I love seeing them. I love all the questions and hearing your response, hearing your stories. Really appreciate all that. Um, This coming Monday's video, I believe will be a GoPro setup video. I um, just used the uh, uh, revenue that I got from your views on my main MTB Allen channel to purchase a backup GoPro Hero 8. Um, And it seems like a good uh, opportunity to show how I set up my camera since I have a brand new one. Um, in other news, uh, we've already said this a number of times, but I recently hit 5,000 subscribers. We recently hit 5,000 subscribers on my main channel and I'm wanting to do an, an ask me anything. I'm kind of a little bit kind of late to all this, uh, or to doing this. I probably should have done it a while ago, but yeah, anyway, uh, if you have questions you'd like me to answer in an, in an AMA, Hit the comments below and uh, and I'll start compiling those. I've got a number already that are pretty dang good, um, but keep them coming, keep them rolling in. Um, I think that's it. Um, stuff I forgot. I didn't really think I have stuff I forgot. Let's do Stoke of the Week. I don't know what chord should I use for this? Stoke of the Week, Stoke of the Week. Stoke of the Week. Oh my god, that was terrible. Stoke of the Week. That's not really it. I'll have to figure out those chords. Stoke of the week this week is music. Um, So I think this is this is maybe why the subject is what it is today. But uh, all the changes that have been going on in in our lives and my in in my life um, has led to me working from home and like my instruments are close by. And this change has kind of gotten me back into making music. And I've just really been digging it. I hope the sound is okay. Um, yeah, so that's it's been nice. Uh, I had like a music. I didn't have a music career. I pursued a music career for a few years back in the early two thousands, and always really liked it. and And coming back to it, it's it's interesting now because uh, when I got into it back then, I I felt I put a lot of pressure on myself to put out music on a regular basis, put out albums. Um, and, uh, I felt like that made me be, uh, less about the craft. It, it, it started out about being about the craft of the music and it turned into producing stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I think I'm, I'm, I I know I'm a lot older now and, uh, slightly wiser. And I think if I, if I were to spin up the music stuff again, I would be more conscious of that. 
But right now, because I'm not thinking about any of that, I'm just making music and it's just kind of fun to do. And I, I don't feel pressure. And uh, yeah, so that's been that's been pretty cool. Um, so let's just jump into our topic for the day, which is about ruts, about tricking your brain and um, kind of retaining progression. Am I framed all weird? I'm going to kick back here for just a second. I'm all like excited from this stuff. So, um, yeah, let me gather my thoughts. So, like I said, um, you know, the, the changes due to the current pandemic situation and social distancing and generally staying at home has really affected my life and has just kind of put a lot of limitations in my life and also has led to opening up new things. And I feel like, uh, obviously we, we don't want to have these, you know, epic things happen or these tragic things happen to make us have to change. So how do we kind of trigger that ourselves? And that's, that's what really kind of got me thinking about this. So, um, getting ourselves to getting ourselves out of a, a rut um, is changing, but, uh, how do we instigate that change ourselves? I guess is what I'm trying to say. So we'll just kind of do this by way of anecdote. I remember when Sky Park opened, if you don't know what Sky Park is, uh, <laughs> well, Sky Park is a small, uh, bike park in Sky Forest in Southern California. And it, uh, is a very different kind of park, but it was like the first, park that I had access to really regularly and I just fell in love with that park and by going there and it, it was like a brand new thing to me new totally new types of trails uh, features I just was all new so my skills progressed pretty quickly by riding there regularly and then riding there regularly it made it become very comfortable for me and I think you know I kind of leveled off on my progression which is natural um, it became standard. It became comfortable. And while it was still fun, I, you know, it wasn't as much of a catalyst for progression in my life. So how do I go about uh, bringing those catalysts back? So really progression, um, you know, obviously there's, there's progression happens in the brain is what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't want to get into the, the, what is the difference between brain and mind and the body and all that kind of stuff. My personal belief is, or well, basically science says that there's the brain, the mind is what the brain does, right? It's not necessarily separate from it. And the brain is part of the body. So, but putting that aside for a minute, um, or not putting that aside, but just we're going to use a useful distinction between the brain and the body. Um, there's not really a distinction, but for the purposes of this conversation, we'll, we'll talk about it in that way. So I'm not able to just change how I think, uh, I'm not that cool. So I have to find ways of tricking myself into thinking differently. And by thinking differently, that's where my progression comes from. So the, you know, the first time I saw, um, the big bridge drop, for instance, uh, on Jump Line on Neverland at Sky Park. And if you don't know that um, feature, just you know, it's just a steep wooden bridge which you can roll, but you can also kind of do it as a big drop. But the first time I saw that, I thought about it in a certain way. I thought about it as you know, I got to kind of roll over it, and I would slow down to do that. And eventually, my view of that was very different and I started just kind of hucking off the end of it and and landing in the transition um, further out in the bottom and just riding it that way so my my brain kind of changed about that but I didn't actively do that I didn't say to my brain brain let's let's look at it in this other way um, that was done through physical activity and that was actually one of those things that happened unconsciously that was uh, just kind of natural spontaneous progression on that. But how would I do that actively? So, um, yeah, actually, real quick, uh, about trying to change my brain by thinking through it or, like, actively doing it, I'm not able to do that. Uh, I look at that as, like, 
I'm trying to change my brain with my brain, which is like trying to like take a picture of my phone with my phone's camera. I don't know if you've ever done that. There's been times when it's like I've got like my kit, I've got like my knife, my wallet, my phone, and I re- I want to take a picture of that and be like, this is me. And I can't because I'd have to use my phone to do that. So, you know, kind of using that metaphor, not that metaphor, but talking about affecting the brain out by doing stuff outside of the brain comes to physical activity or action based. Um, um, or just kind of an external uh, uh, guardrails, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, so one so let's let's jump into the methods. Um, wow, I'm really kind of all over the place. So yeah, how do I change the brain? So it's just one thing is to change the environment. So this is can be one of the more uh, 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 costly ways of doing it, whether that's just by in like money investment or time investment, uh, life investment, but. You can change the environment by obviously going to a new spot and writing new things, kind of like when I when Sky Park was new to me, um, or the first time I went and rode Snow Summit, or any of the times I rode somewhere other than my normal local trails, and that made me progress. Um, different terrain required different things, but also even if it's the same kind of feature, it's in a different situation, so I had to adjust to that, and so that kind of got me. Um, thinking differently. And really the evidence of that is when you go back to your comfortable areas and then you're able to hit those uh, or ride those areas in a different way. So if you can't, so another way to do, to change the environment is to change the bike. The bike is, is part of the environment. So uh, why would you want to change your bike? So I think a lot of the habits we have are directly related to interacting with that particular bike. If you've been riding the same bike for a couple of years, um, it's hard to say how much of the way you ride is is your skills and progression and how much of it is just knowing how to work your bike, which is good. It's great to do that, um, but it's also good to know what's what, you know. And one way to do that is to demo bikes. Go to your local bike shop, see what demos they have, and try out different bikes. And and try out bikes that like maybe you're not interested in, but that just that are built to do certain things and and see what you have to adjust. And the things you have to adjust for that bike uh, point out the things that are habits that you have that are directly connected to the bike you've been riding. Um in, and um, yeah, so if your trails are open and you have a bike shop that is following protocols and able to uh, demo you a bike uh, in this current situation, then that can be cool. I know the path is doing that right now. Um, I was actually surprised by that, but uh, I recently listened to their podcast and they were talking about how uh, they go about um, demoing bikes still. So that's pretty rad. So if you don't have either of those, Right. So, I mean, both of those um, do require some level of investment. If you don't have either of those and all you have is your local trails and your current bike, there's still a lot of things you can do. You can impose limitations, just kind of arbitrary rules. Uh, And that could be something like, so, okay, let's break that down real quick. So let's say I want to get faster on a trail or I want to ride a trail more smoothly, which actually can kind of be the same thing because average speed wins races. Um, If you want, you can unpack that. So um, if you want to do that, you could just say to yourself, like, I'm going to be smoother on this trail, and then you're going to ride the trail and try to be smoother or try to be faster. To me, that's that can work. You can push harder, pedal in places where you don't necessarily pedal, but it's also when it comes to progressing your skills, doing that sort of thing, that approach is is akin to saying, you know, I put air in my shock and my suspension is pretty good. So I want my suspension to be better. So I'm going to put more air in, which doesn't necessarily work, right? You, you want to adjust um, accordingly. You want to adjust intelligently. Um, so 
by putting limitations on your ride, it gets you to see the trail in a different way. So an example of this is a no pedal ride. Uh, one of the trails at Sky Park, uh, um, Arrow. Arrow has a lot of different features, a lot of berms. It's actually, I'm talking about old Arrow because I don't know if you could do what I'm going to talk about on current Arrow. But a lot of features. It's got a little bit of uphill, some ups and downs and stuff. And uh, me and a buddy started trying to do Arrow without pedaling. So you, yeah, so just imagine that. So by doing it without pedaling, you had to really be aware of your average speed. Um, it meant that you had to be more cautious about uh, uh, when you're braking, right? Which meant you had to be able to take some of the turns and berms faster than you normally do. And then in the areas, if you knew that there was a slight uphill, you really had to conserve speed. You also had to be really conscious of any little thing you could pump off of. So it made you much better at braking. It also made you better at berms. Me, I should say. It made me better at pumping and um, all that stuff. It also made me better at like scrubbing stuff because I knew if I like jumped really high on something, um, I was going to lose speed. So that was one way to do it. Um, another thing way to do it is the opposite which is like a no braking uh, a little bit more dangerous but again talking about sky park uh i used to do no braking as much for as long as i could so on sleigh ride sorry sleigh ride is the blue trail it's, it's kind of like a pump trail it's like a long extended pump track almost uh, with just some really great turns but i would see how far i could go on that trail without hitting my brakes. I would come in with like the normal speed I would come in with, like hitting in a bunch of pedals. Also no pedaling, right? So no pedal, no brake for as long as possible. And again, started learning how to use turns to slow myself down and then get faster in certain turns. And also just be smoother. Um, I'm actually wondering if I could do a no brake ride on the waterfall at the top of shoots i probably have to come in a little bit slower but i just kind of thought about this that this morning so yeah another way of uh so those are a couple of limitations no braking no pedaling um or both of those no braking and no pedaling um say <laughs> done safely of course um uh you could also just generally slow down that can really affect things i know Um, On jump lines in particular, learning how to ride jump lines more slowly is really key, Um, especially for those of us who have just gotten relatively comfortable with jumping. It's really easy to be over dependent on speed on jumps. That's what I was doing for a long time. Um, Just go faster and then I could clear it. Um, And it wasn't until I... I don't really remember the full train of events, but I do know that um, probably my second worst injury, or maybe my one of my one of my bad injuries, separating my shoulder, was a result of me just like going as fast as I could to clear a jump, and not using technique at all. And it wasn't until I, you know, was a little more open to observing what other people were doing that I started learning. Um, I rode, I think it was riding behind Tommy Huynh actually. And, and that crew, the the crew he was riding with that day at Sky Park on Neverland. And I was, it was the first time, I think that was maybe the first time I rode with Tommy, but um, let's just say it. I think pretty sure. Yeah. That was the first time I rode with Tommy and I was actually uh, expecting him to ride a, I'm not going to actually, let me take that back. I might've ridden with it, ridden with him at least. So in any case, first time I rode with him on Neverland at Sky Park, I was expecting him and his crew to just be booking down that trail. And I found myself on my brakes a lot, but they were clearing the jumps and I wasn't because they were using, they were boosting, you know, they were using actual technique to clear the jumps. So by slowing down on that trail, I really you know, just got better at it. Um, and here's one that, that might seem a little bit weird until you try it. So 
This can apply to your climb. It can also apply to your descending. Try breathing only through your nose. I know this sounds weird, but it really affects, um, it really makes you conscious of where you are like spiking your heart rate and spiking your effort. Um, if you can, if you can make it down, you know, like a eight to 12 minute descent and only breathe through your nose, you, um, it, it, it's evidence of being able to maintain calm and maintain like a good um, uh, stamina through that ride. Same with like climbing. Um, yeah, uh, it also has a bit of a calming effect, but it's it's a it's a really interesting way. I I, I can't fully unpack it because I don't fully understand it. I know there's there's some science behind it. Um, I kind of looked up some of this stuff when I was still a coach. Or sorry, a trainer, but try it. Uh, it's it's interesting. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I know. Mean, obviously, this can apply to life outside of mountain biking. Um, you know, I know a lot of us are already kind of you know dealing with changes and whatnot. Uh, I should say though, uh, you know, it's been a month and a half now, I think, that, uh, you know, we've been in social distancing and quote unquote lockdown, even though it's not really lockdown. It's mostly just like, hey guys, could you stay home more? Um, for me, working from home was a big change, uh, but I actually settled in pretty decently and I felt like I was kind of getting into a rut uh, just very quickly. I tend to adjust to things really quickly. Um, even big changes, it's weird. It's like the little changes that I have troubles, troubles with it's the big changes. I'm like, okay, fine. We're doing this now. But, um, you know, I think once I started getting into the rut, that's when I like pulled the guitar back out and put it next to my desk and started like just kind of jamming little riffs every now and then, uh, while I was taking breaks from work. So obviously you could do the same kind of thing in just your day to day life. You know, like if you're going to, you could, a clear an obvious one is nutrition you could you know say i'm not going to i'm going to limit uh how much sugar i intake or i'm going to not eat any refined sugar i'm not going to change anything else i'm going to change that one little thing um yeah i think the underlying concept that i probably should have talked about this earlier on is that because everything is integrated right let's kind of just talk about that that you know there is really no direct there's no clean line between your brain and the rest of you and your body it's all interconnected uh and in that way and and using that um we can make a small change that has like ripple effects uh i remember years ago when my life was a total mess i had a mentor and i remember just saying to him like oh my, i just feel like i can't get organized i can't think straight you know i'm just always all over the place and he stopped me and he said alan did when you got up from the bed this morning, um, did you make the bed? And I was like, no. And he's like, start making your bed. Just make your bed in the morning. And I was like, okay, fine. Uh, but once I did that, you know, that little bit of order in my life started expanding out to other parts of just my room. And then that expand, you know, that again was this kind of physical outward behavioral change that I made that started then affecting my brain and affecting how I saw things. And um, my brain is still a total mess, but it's less of a total mess than it was before. Um, and that's also kind of one of those things where it's not a set it and forget it, right? It's like anything you have to, it's like these things that get messy, you have to continually uh, clean it up. So bringing that back to mountain biking, um, if I'm not, if I'm not, I'm probably going to suck at jumping when I, when, when, when we get back to the jumps, uh, because I haven't been doing a lot of it and, um, and yeah, cause I haven't been practicing that in any case, using these things, limitations and whatnot to kind of keep ourselves progressing. Um, yeah, one quick flip side of things is it's also good to, put the limitation of, of not a limitation. It's, it's, you could think of it as a limitation, but basically taking a break 
sometimes. Like if you're going out every Wednesday and Friday or every Saturday and whatever days, if you're always going out on those days and you're riding those every week, it can actually help to take a week off and go do something else. Uh, it doesn't even matter what it is. If it could be even just riding um, uh, a jump, uh, a, a, a dirt jumper, um, or if you're a, if you've got an old skateboard, if you go roll around on that or whatever. If you have a razor, leave that in the garage. You you don't need to ride a scooter. Um, just leave that in the garage. Skateboard. Um. <laughs> uh, any case. Maybe do something else every occasionally, you know, and you'll actually find that when you come back to the bike that your skills are refreshed and you may, you know, just find something new about that. I I know I experienced that uh, quite often. I I think Katie was talking to me about that, too, that sometimes just taking a week off helps her. Uh, It actually allows your it can allow your brain to process um, and, and solidify things that you may have learned previously. Like you, you, you become conscious of something that you're trying to adjust or fix. Um, you could do that physically and then take a break and then let your brain kind of do its thing. I think actually, um, uh, backyard trail builds, uh, he talked about that when he was trying to like learn to, uh, wheelie. And he was talking about like the sleep cycle and how the sleep cycle or sleeping on it can really help. Um, he progressed really fast. That was pretty impressive. Like I'm, I'm not, yeah, anyway. So yeah, there you have it. Those are my thoughts on all that kind of stuff on keeping your progression going by staying out of ruts, putting limitations on yourself, changing your brain by not using your brain. (laughs) Don't use your brain. I guess that's the clickbait for this week, right? Stop using your brain. Brainless, be dumb. How's that? How's that? Be dumb to be better. All right. Hope you dug this. Uh, Hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, I'll show up in your feed. You'll be supporting the channel. Um, Hit me with comments. Remember, if you want me to answer stuff in an AMA, in an Ask Me Anything, hit me in the comments and I will be continually checking so that I can get to your comments sooner. I'm trying to think if there's anything I forgot. I don't know. Maybe Um, I need to make an outro song. Um, I don't have one outro song. I'll make one up real quick. Outro song. See you next week.